It is sensationalist and false to say that watching television leads people to kill. However, what we have seen in rare, terrifying cases is disturbed individuals latching on to elements of fiction as inspiration in the execution of their own evil acts. In today's episode, we'll be exploring two chilling cases of killers inspired by TV shows. But first, I'd like to thank Hunt a Killer for sponsoring today's episode. If there's one thing that's on everyone's minds through the month of October, it's that each year on the final day of the month, Halloween is celebrated around the world. It transforms autumn into the season of scares and its potential for haunts is limitless. For some of us, however, we wonder how we will keep that spine-chilling charm alive on Halloween night after years of the same costumes and same traditions. Luckily, we've solved that mystery with a spell-binding game that doesn't require you to stress about a complicated new festivity in the made-for-Halloween masterpiece, Hunt a Killer. Once again, returning sponsors of today's video. As a subscription-based interactive sleuthing game, with Hunt a Killer, you'll receive monthly delivery boxes with brand new cases to crack, hiding within every single time. Each box includes a unique mystery, letting you escape into a world of clever clues, perplexing puzzles, and the chance to finally solve that murder, keeping you up at night. You won't have to stitch together a last second detective costume or purchase extra materials. With banks of evidence and audio resources provided for you, right to your doorstep. And if in-depth storytelling is more of your vibe, each case features their own original characters with intriguing backgrounds, assembling a detailed narrative that's far more than just a gruesome crime scene. And whether you take on the hunt by yourself, like the hard-boiled private eye, or with a crew of crafty friends, Hunter Killer can bring people together for the perfectly satisfying Halloween homicide. But not only that, we've found the game to be more engaging than your everyday true crime documentary or blockbuster thriller. As you know, we at Cold Case Detective want to make you, the viewer, feel like an integral part of the cases we cover. And this game does that and more. It makes you the Sherlock Holmes or Agatha Christie, and we haven't received a box that didn't disappoint. Right now, just for our viewers, you can go to hunterkiller.com slash coldcasedetective and use code coldcasedetective for $10 off your purchase and to show your support to the channel. So come alive this Halloween to hunt a killer. And now let's dive in with today's mysteries. Stephen Miles. Described as a chilling, blood-curdling attack, the murder of 17-year-old Elizabeth Thomas by her 16-year-old boyfriend Stephen Miles was a crime that sent shockwaves through the small community of Oxted, a quiet town of around 11,000 people in Surrey, England. At around 2.35 p.m. on January 24th of 2014, Elizabeth and Miles left Oxted School in Blue House Lane and headed back to the 16-year-old's home on Amy Road. The couple had met in their shared politics class and had begun dating towards the end of 2013. They had been together for three months, and Elizabeth told her friends that Miles was difficult to date, mostly because of his autism diagnosis. When her friends questioned why they were together, the 17-year-old replied, that she was fighting for him. Back at Miles' family home, however, things took a horrific turn when the teenager launched an attack against his girlfriend. Using a knife, he stabbed her in the head and back. Elizabeth's skull would later be found with a knife protruding from it. Afterwards, Miles dismembered the young girl's legs and arms, wrapping them in cling film before placing them in plastic bin bags. Next, using saws and tools from his father's tree surgery business, Miles cut up the remainder of Elizabeth's body, which he covered in a plastic sheet. 
When Miles' sister returned home, roughly one hour after the murder, she was immediately hit with the strong scent of disinfectants, which became more apparent as she made her way to her little brother's room. The 16-year-old simply told his sibling, Ed made me do something bad. Authorities were called to the scene at around 5.35 p.m., where they found Elizabeth's torso crammed beneath the teenage boy's desk, while her other body parts, still wrapped, were strewn across the room. Additionally, they discovered a partially burnt note, which had been written by Miles, and read, quote, bag, bin bag, plastic sheet, army knife, cling film, suggesting to investigators that this horrific slaying had most certainly been premeditated. Back in the kitchen, officers also recovered blood-stained clothing from a plastic bag. The heinous crime, which could be likened to something from a horror film, terrified and shocked the local community. Although Miles was not known to be an easy teenager, nobody expected him to become a murderer. During his trial, he was described as a teen who was fascinated with horror films and the macabre. He was currently reading one of the Hannibal Lecter novels, and it was discovered that he was obsessed with the TV show Dexter, and had tried to emulate the actions of its main character, who shares the name. The hit US show is based on the novel Darkly Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay, and follows the story of a bloodstained pattern analyst who moonlights as a serial killer, often targeting other killers or those who have otherwise slipped through the cracks of the United States justice system. In the weeks leading up to the crime, Miles had texted Elizabeth, telling her she will see a lot of similarities in the personality of Dexter and myself. It was soon revealed by many of the new sources who covered the slaying that Miles had a long and troubled history. The teenager reportedly told his family that he had an alter ego named Ed, and he later claimed that it was Ed who'd instructed him to kill someone. Additionally, he told family that Elizabeth was Ed's project. A few years prior, in 2012, he was referred to mental health services as he was struggling with self-harm. During this time, he told a psychotherapist about Ed, but this was diagnosed as anxiety and part of his autism. He was never considered to be suffering from psychosis. It was also discovered during the investigation that Miles had been violent before. An ex-girlfriend told authorities about how he'd described how he was going to kill someone and that he'd once tried to strangle her. She reported that the teenager laughed as he did so and that he had a lot of strength. When she told him she couldn't breathe, he replied, that's the point. After the crime, Miles was seen by five psychiatrists, two neurologists, and one psychologist, all of whom agreed that he was well enough that he could not use the defense of diminished responsibility. While there, experts noted that the 16-year-old also had elements of narcissistic personality disorder and anxiety but that none of these conditions were fully developed, and again, would not hinder his responsibility. Stephen Miles was sentenced at Guildford Crown Court, and was given 25 years for the murder of Elizabeth Thomas. His defense had argued during the trial that Miles was inspired by his idol, Dexter, and that the case is a sad testament to the perils of how young people can become entrenched in modern TV blockbusters involving violence, which shockingly led to a copycat killing in real life. The judge, Christopher Critchlow, said that he would have given Miles a whole life term if he was an adult. However, as he was 16 at the time, he was not allowed to pass that sentence. Elizabeth's family described her as a kind, caring, loving, and gentle girl. She grew up in West Wickham in southeast London and was studying at Oxford School for her A-levels at the time of her death. Her loved ones added that the house is so quiet without her and that their sadness will last forever. Brittany Dwyer and Bernadette Burns At 11am on August 5th, 2016, 19-year-old Brittany Dwyer and her friend, 21-year-old Bernadette Burns, pulled up in front of Dwyer's grandfather's house in Adelaide, Australia. 
The pair had traveled from Queensland with a plan to steal 81-year-old Robert Whitwell's life savings, which he kept in his home because he didn't trust banks. Burns waited in the car while Dwyer visited her grandfather. The two reminisced about old times while they looked over photographs and old video footage of the 19-year-old and her brother when they were children. As the pair sat and chatted, Dwyer sent Burns a text telling her she couldn't go through with their plan. However, the 21-year-old replied, telling her friend to harden up and that she had to carry out the scheme because they had come all this way. Dwyer had come to the home with a backpack filled with tools, including bolt cutters, tin snips, a hammer, gloves, cable ties, and a knife. As her grandfather walked her to the door, the 19-year-old pulled out her concealed knife and turned, stabbing the 81-year-old man in the neck and chest. When he asked her why she did it, Dwyer did not answer, instead following him to the kitchen where he frantically looked for bandages. As Robert slumped into a kitchen chair and bled out, the 19-year-old began washing his dishes. After his death, Dwyer gathered $1,000 in cash which she found in his house and stole two digital cameras. She was unable to locate the $110,000 in savings, which, unbeknownst to the young woman, was kept in his shed. Following the theft, Dwyer and Burns returned to Queensland. Three days later, Robert's body was found, and an anonymous tip-off in the days following the discovery led police straight to the two young women. News coverage of the case revealed to the public that Dwyer had suffered a downward spiral since her teens. Her mother, whose father was Robert Whitwell, told the media about how her daughter had gone from a bubbly child to a sullen teenager who was obsessed with graveyards, knives, and other macabre things. In her teen years, she began having issues with drug and alcohol abuse, and was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. She also had struggled with self-harm and had anger problems. Meanwhile, Bernadette Burns had reportedly been struck in a self-destructive cycle for some time after losing custody of her young daughter. At a pre-trial hearing in 2017, Dwyer's lawyer claimed that the American anthology horror show American Horror Story was to blame, saying, That aspect of it is very troubling. The popular series explores humankind's capacity for evil and general obsession with crime and murder. He added that the show's influence, combined with Dwyer's young age, were reasons for the jury to grant the young woman leniency. However, the judge stated that Dwyer was motivated by greed and an unnatural interest with violence and seeing people die. Additionally, this was not the first time that Dwyer had attempted to steal her grandfather's savings. In April of 2016, she and a friend named Shelby Holmes drove to his home to visit. Holmes told Dwyer that he was lovely via text, and the 19-year-old replied, he is very lovely, don't get attached to him, he might have to die. The pair returned to the house the following day, but failed in their attempts to rob the elderly man, getting spooked by a sensor light, multiple barking dogs, and a nearby neighbor. At some point before her sentencing, Dwyer told a psychiatrist that Robert may have molested her as a child, but she wasn't sure if her memories were real or not. She appeared to use this as a defense for her actions, but these claims were dismissed by the court who felt that due to the lack of evidence and the fact that the claims had emerged so last minute, they were not reliable. Her mother also denied the accusations. Both Dwyer and Burns pled guilty to murder. Dwyer's mother and brother asked that she be given the maximum penalty for her crime. She has been given a life sentence that includes 20 and a half years without parole, plus six months for home invasion. Meanwhile, Burns has also received life imprisonment, although she will be eligible for parole after 13 and a half years. As she is a New Zealand national, she may be possibly deported after her release. Shelby Holmes, who originally attempted to steal Robert's money with Dwyer, was charged with trespassing and handed a 17-month suspended sentence. Robert was described by loved ones as a great man who loved his family. When speaking about the crime, his daughter, Dwyer's mother, has said, I feel like I am drowning 
in life. And there you have the facts. Please leave a comment down below with your own theories and speculations. And remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. You can also support us on Patreon for as little as $2 each month. Thank you for watching. Stay alert, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.